I, I was actually really excited to do this conversation because, well, I want to know how to do it. You know, <laughs> right? Like, I'm like, because yeah, don't get me wrong, I'm not against people avoiding right. paying taxes. Because people are always like, oh, the the rich do this and that, and they don't pay their taxes, but you don't often understand that, like you can do it too. Like there's so many simple little tips and tricks that even the regular everyday American could use to like lower their tax burden. You know what I mean? Which and I mean, everybody does it. Everybody takes deductible. deductible I mean, not yeah. deductible, but like, you know, you take your, whatever the IRS is going to let you write off of that right. shit, you're taking it. Like right. I've never met anybody that was like, nah, take it all. Take yeah, it. Right. Ta- yeah. I don't want anything back. I want to pay more. No, no, no. no keep no, my no. tax refund. No, yeah. no, thank you. Well, definitely when you see how the rich live, if you're not a rich person and somebody came to you or you did your research and found out like, oh, the government will just give me a couple hundred thousand dollars for whatever reason. Like, no, I don't <laughs> want to. No, we are already in debt. Yeah, like, yeah. No, you're going to be like, oh, be I qualify for this thing. Yeah, sure. Seems like a good reason to mm-hmm. do that thing. Yeah. Like you said, I don't care what tax bracket you fall into. You didn't turn down your fucking Biden bucks. You know? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah that's like, great like, point. You know, and like, if there's 800 billion for the fucking yeah. uh, military or the defense budget, right. yeah. I'm sure you could slide me a couple. Yeah. Thousand. I mean, yeah. Like it's not going to hurt the people. World. People ask me about that. They were like, how can you be against all these like social welfare programs? But then, you know, accept the money for the IRS giving it back to you in the stimulus checks. And I was like. Because that's my money. Because I live in a like society they, they where took they it deemed from me. that to happen. <laughs> yeah, I was like, and besides, even if, it, if, even if I didn't feel like it was my money to begin with, if the government's just handing out free money, you know I'm going to go up there and get some. Why would you say Like, no? why would you not do that? You exactly. I mean? like, if you live within a system and the only way you can affect that system is by voting... Then if they're giving out free money, I don't get to <laughs> vote whether or not that money goes to something you know I care about. Yeah. I didn't get that vote. Yeah. They just gave me money. Yeah. So like to morally be like, oh, poo 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 that mm-hmm. fucking $1,200 yeah. from Donald Trump. Your money's no good, government. You know, that's just, that's crazy. It's, this is an analogy. It's not really the same thing. But this is like, for me, when I see people getting mad at, at soldiers and like, you know, people in the military, like the war is not those people's fault. Like if your, your, your your struggle is with the fact that we're fighting X, Y, Z war, like don't go after the military people. So it's the same thing too. Like I always look at it as like, I didn't make the fucking rules to this game. I'm just playing the game the best I can. Like everybody else, like they already said, this is monopoly. Now I'm just trying to get as much as I can within that system. And so, I mean, that's what capitalism is about. Like you said, if you don't like it, fix the fucking rules. When you pass go, you take the two hundred. You collect the two hundred dollars. You don't yeah. just say, "I'd rather be in jail." Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you don't. You didn't make the rules. <laughs> so for me, like I said, this conversation is very interesting because I wonder how they do certain things like that. Like mm-hmm. I can't tell you how many times I've been to a theme park or a mall or some gigantic megalithic like structure, and I'm like. Who pays the electricity in this fucking building? Like, yeah. my electric bill is like $350 for my little ass house. I'm like, I can't imagine what it is for the Dallas Cowboys football stadium. Yeah, the yeah. overhead. Yeah. I think about that at water parks. I'm like, I bet you this water bill is insane. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but they yeah. don't pay it. Like, but they don't. They like, don't pay Disney it. Disney World is a perfect <laughs> example. They don't. They didn't pay for any of that shit. They just yeah. bought the land. All the roads. Y- like, use some type of fucking law to make it a county. And then your taxpayers paid for Disneyland to get water piping, to build all the sewage draining systems, the roads. Those are all county roads on yeah. Disneyland. Like, it's crazy. The, you know what? What really was interesting for me is it got me really thinking because I was watching people talk about how the, you know, about how these corporations and the government are like working together to create the loopholes in the laws so that way they can find all these ways through it and like at first i was like yeah that makes sense like corruption and conspiracy but then the more i thought about it and the more i think about my stance on just like grand conspiracies in general i always think that it's more about a bunch of people like to me i feel like these kinds of scenarios happen where government bureaucracies and people who are just like no name paper pushers actually write up a lot of this stuff like the laws so they write up all these laws but there are laws about this and there's laws about that and there's laws that apply to these people but not to those people and so you have this hodgepodge and it doesn't really have a cohesive idea to keep it all going in the right direction and so then really smart accountants and lawyers come behind them and they just find all the mistakes in the code. Like when you're programming, you like write code mm-hmm. and then you go back and you check the code and you're like, oh, I fucked this up. Mm-hmm. And so that's kind of what I feel like is really happening. Like it's not a conspiracy. It's just like people make dumb laws 
and they make laws that conflict with other laws and then other people come behind them and they just oh well i can just skirt that law by doing this are you also discounting the fact are you discounting the fact that people manipulate that from the go though because like i definitely no but i don't think that that's the main course i don't know about that because there's so many different the, the, the the reason why is because there's so many different especially in america like the laws are so such to the point where a good example is the tobacco thing in California where they tax the shit out of tobacco, but then they also subsidize tobacco industry. So it's like you have different groups pulling the government in different directions and that creates the cracks that you can slip through is right. what I but then that's my point is the tobacco industry is heavily manipulative in the creating of laws. I mean, when they were about to ban tobacco and shit like that, like the tobacco lobbyists and all that stuff went like hella hard on like combating all these different things within that law yeah so, but I but i don't think that it's the a- case that the tobacco industry is like in bed with the tobacco taxers oh, that's yeah, what i'm saying think i think that. that they're all just operating on their own there's, there's tons i think some cases the people who are writing the bills are writing them you know with their their oh, people their aides their whatever but there's definitely instances where a corporation's like oh we got a bill for that mm-hmm. we wrote the bill yeah uh yeah. you just you susan gilderbrand you fucking right whoever, sponsor, whoever, this. They sponsor appoint, this and bring it into the house mm-hmm. bring it into the senate and or stuff it into this fucking mm-hmm. thing and that shit is written by the same lawyers who are then going to find you know right. it's like oh we wrote a tax loophole in there right. so if you said ollie ollie oxen free before right. you went in there and you did three spins around <laughs> the counterclockwise you don't have to pay any taxes and like i know i'm being silly but how the fuck do you think people like amazon don't pay taxes yeah it's not just because oh i have infinite money so i could write the bills oh wait that's what it is yeah now i think it's, i think <laughs> it's a combination it of both it's, i think sometimes yeah. people write bills not an, um, Jordan Peterson, perfect example where he was fighting the little C-16 bill. I just saw a clip of this the other day. And he was also saying, he's like, it's not like I'm against discrimination. Like, I get what y'all are trying to do. You're trying to help people, and that's great. But he's like, but in the way you're going about it, you're not seeing how people, how that could end in some fuck shit. So I definitely think that happens sometimes where they, they produce a law and they just don't think it all the way through and they leave little gaps and stuff like that. But there's definitely a whole nother subsection. And I would say it's either a 50, 50 or like a 60, 40 split of just fuck shit. Like you said, where McDonald's writes the law and then brings it to them and says, we want this to be a law. You need to make this yes. shit happen. Cause I paid for you to be sitting in that chair. And cause you know, you see it even just in the politics where they go back and forth and they're like, all right, well, I'll let you keep that in there, but you got to put my thing in there. Mm. And they're like, well, you know, like they're negotiating on what goes in the laws in the first place. So I just know that there's fuck shit going on where there's... <laughs>